Hey everyone, this is Lucas and welcome to this video. So today we're going to have a look, as the title implies, at collection views with Swift 3 in iOS 10. And we're going to do this without the storyboard. So if you're new to this, you will also learn how to well, make all of that without a storyboard, which I personally find pretty good. So, uh, before we start, I just want to show you my GitHub page again, in case you have uh, you have missed that. I have one. It's always in my description, by the way. Well, I have all kinds of code on here, so if you're interested in learning some stuff, you can do so. So, for example, here I have some Swift things like Rubik's Cube model, how to make an easy browser, a synchro list that I've written with Firebase that's still in Swift 2. Um, here, bstats, that's an app written in Swift 2 for iOS 9, but I've got a new version in Swift 3. Um, here, it looks also different. Synchro Sketch, a pretty cool app. You can draw syn um, synchronously into devices. I uh, also have like open, uh, like open source or free stuff, the material design, um, well, theme for Xcode. So I have a video on my channel about how to install a theme on Xcode. And I have made two on ones, those two, pretty nice. Uh, and I also have like core table that's pretty cool for people people who are new into Swift three, how to learn how to um like because core data changed in Swift three, and here you can learn how to do that in Swift three with iOS ten. Then I'm also currently learning Ruby or actually Ruby on Rails, and uh, here are some of my things that I'm current that I've currently working on and numcipher a pretty cool thing that I've done a while ago but it's also but it is also in go I've written in, in two things it has a pretty cool um, documentation it's a uh, script um, encrypting or enciphering the ciphering algorithm package for both Swift and go so if you are interested in that just look on here follow me and you'll get the latest um, updates about what I'm doing so okay so the first of well, the first thing we're gonna do in this fresh project is gonna remove the functions and comments that we don't need. Here you go, make some space, and we're going to rename this here, I don't know, um, item view controller, because we're just going to have a lot of elements here. And you could do UI collection view controller, but I personally like it more to be a UI view controller for a good reason. It's just that sometimes you want to add something else on top, and when it's a UI collection view controller, that's, in my opinion, kind of messy. And yeah, so the next thing you want to do here is in the main interface, you want to delete this here, and then also this file. There you go. And just to make it more, um, obvious it's just also rename the file and we're done and now we have to go to the app delegate remove this here so maybe a few people if you have never used the app delegate and a lot of people probably hate the app delegate just because um and often the crash notifications are always saying that your app delegate is um it's the fall of the of the app delegate so what we're going to do is we're going to call it ui window and we're going to give it the type here, UI window, window as you can see. And we need to say CG Racked. And here, well, you have all of this. But instead, what you're going to do is UI screen. So basically, the current screen you have, main dot balance. There you go. So if you look here, balance, that's the type we need, CG Racked. And there you go. By that, we just told the window what size it has to be, the frame, what size it, what size it have, has to be. It's the size of the screen because, as we know, it varies from iPhone to iPhone. If you have the Plus model, it's going to be bigger. So, or yes, E, it's even smaller. And now, we, now we have to call this and make key invisible. There you go. And now we need a root view controller that we have to set right here. Um, this can be your, um, this can be your item view controller, basically. There you go. That can be it. That should work now. Let's run it on an iPhone SE. That will take a second just because, yeah, well, I don't know. My MacBook does not really appreciate the performance of 
Mac OS Sierra. It's kind of slow. So there you go. As you see, well, you see nothing, but it doesn't crash. That means it works. And now it's just proof that it works. You will hear my MacBook getting warm. I don't have my microphone with me today. If we say background color here, sorry, of the view, of course, view background color. And you don't have to say UI color, by the way, you can just say white, and you don't have to do those anymore. It's just an enum. There you go, white. And that works. So, yeah. There you go, the background is white, that means we successfully created this. And now we have to start making the actual collection view. So how do we do this? Well, first of all, we need to actually have a collection view on here. So we're going to create a collection view like this, and then what you would do is like this. But in my opinion, that's not really nice, and what I learned from Ruby is pretty cool. You say here the type is a UI collection view, and then what you do here is you initialize it like this. So you say type and then equals to and you initialize it like that. And now inside of here, you just create CV like this, UI collection view again. And this time you need a frame. And here we say zero. That's just, just like go for that. That's better. You don't have to do the CG rect, rectangle. So go here, do this, and then you need a UI collection view layout. We're going to use another type of layout, which brings more functionality uh, functionality to it, which is UI collection view. UI collection view flow layout. And initialize it. There you go. So basically what we have done here now is we just created a variable, uh, sorry, a constant layout with this type and you could also go and say UI collection view layout as it says here but really trust me on this one UI collection view flow layout just brings a bit more functionality to your layout and that's always a nice thing to do because later if you want to change everything you have to call functions if you don't go for the flow uh, layout and here you can simply just call some attributes and change their values and that's in my opinion way nicer because it's just all bundled in here and then here just type in layout and you're good to go and at the end you just have to return the CV and there you go now in here you could basically put all the code but we're going to set it up somewhere else set up controller or something like this just go for a function and then here we can put add sub view to the to the view of course add sub view and in here we want to add the collection view and before or after it actually doesn't matter we want to change the size collection views frame so the frame is just like the screen size so actually what or well the size of the whole thing is going to be the same as, in my matter, it's going to be the same as the whole screen, which is the view, the view's frame, and uh, we should be good to go. And so you can learn how cool this is. You could basically now go here and say collection view and background color, but that is so stupid because like it is just all messy. And instead, well, you could do a you know, setup controller. It's nice too, but how about this? If you have everything bundled in here, and the property for changing the color is actually going to be in here. I personally find it much nicer. And here you go. Let's say red. You know, we made the view be white. Well, no, it's not white anymore, but it's going to be black if it's not white. But now we have the CV, which lays on top of the view. And that means it's going to be red if everything works, which it doesn't. Okay, that's strange. Um, we probably misspelled something or so. Oh, yeah, well, no, we didn't, but we have not called the function. Sorry for that. Probably some people said, oh, you missed something. I did. Here you go. Yeah, it's red. So that's already a thing. That means we have our collection you laying on top 
of our layout right now and the oh I'm talking about of our view I'm sorry <laughs> and that's a good thing that means we can just simply work with our cells now so we can actually have those collection view cells in our collection view and yeah let's do that so the first thing that we want to be doing is actually call a method that says how many of those cells we would like to have. So what we do for this is you may notice here you say UI collection view and then you say data source. But in my opinion this is much too this is way too messy just because you put all the functions of this thing of this pr protocol in your main class and uh, no. We have a cool thing in Swift called extensions and we just go we're just going to make a extension to the item view controller of that type and now the cool thing is it's going to actually tell us which ones are missing here you see it has uh, it says it's not conforming to UI collection view data source protocol and if we go here um, click on here it shows up uh, shows us what is missing and we can actually just well I'm sorry we, we can just like type in what it says basically well I know it but if you're new to this it might be helpful so if you type in number of sections and we choose this here collection view number of items in section and we need another one which is called like this type of collection view I always type in collection view or table view if it's a table view and I get all my functions and we need this one that returns a collection view cell and there you go those functions should look really obvious to you and as you can see the error goes away or the warning goes away and now we have to well let's first understand those functions cell for item add index path that just means if you want to modify the cell you have the opportunity to do that here and you also have to return it here just so it knows what kind of cell you're talking about so you can make adjustments as is there going to be a profile image? Is there going to be a name label and all of those things? And you can update the values if you if you have data, and that's pretty nice. And number of items in section is you can put everything, for example, in a table view controller into many sections, and those sections have items. And yeah, that's what you're going to do here. So for example, here we're going to say let, we're gonna to, going to make a constant cell equals to collection view and then a DQ reusable cell with user uh, with reuse identify uh, identifier for index path here you can simply type an index path because that's the parameter um, here but um, here we need to put in a string for the cell we have not registered one yet if you know the storyboard you can do, always do that here on the side you were always able to do that on your right side but now we can't really do that anymore so instead what we're going to do here is we're going to do like something as cell what do you identify our so id so id and we're just going to call this i don't know item item let's just call it item um, let's maybe do that uh, lowercase and well we have that now but we have not registered yet a class that we can do that here we just go and say collection view and then register class set class and here we can say UI collection view uh, collection view cell no that was right cell and then we have to say self and here we just type in the cell ID and that identifier for this constant. And down here we just put in the same thing. So we don't have to update each of them, but if we want to update it, we just can do it up here and it will work. And that's pretty nice. So that's why it is good to make actually everything in code because you just have to change one thing and then it will change all. If you use the storyboard, you have to change it here on the right side in the storyboard and then in your code. And that's pretty well annoying so here then let's just say five and we have to let's say we don't have to but let's say we're going to make the cell be black 
And then we have to return it finally because it's saying here with that arrow, um, give me a collection view cell, and here the amount as an end. So now if we're going to run this, it will not work. I'll show you and I will explain why, because we're missing one thing to actually make it work. Here you see nothing, no cells. That is because here down here we need to add something else data source so here that's why I say that's pretty cool you see everything is bundled in here not down here not down here it's all in this part and that's nice and then we just say self like this and now if we run this okay it does not it does not want me to do that um Okay, I don't know exactly why that is, but let's do it down here then. Maybe, maybe we have to make it messy in this case, do we? Yeah, looks like we have to. I don't know why that is, but usually it works. But yeah, well, it satisfies it. So here you go. You've got you've got your five cells right here. And now you might want to change the sizes, and therefore we need another thing. And now you can see how the extension come comes in, or how the extensions come in handy. Um, you just have to do another one, and then item view controller, controller, UI collection view, and then here flow uh, delegate flow layout. And in here, you can call different functions. So if you type in collection view. We have stuff like, hmm, let's see, do we find it without typing in the keyword for that? Here, size for item. Here we can change the size of the cell. And if we say here, return CG size, and initialize this, so we can say a width, which I want to be the views frame dot width, so just the whole screen's width. And hide, we can say 50, for example. And now, what we can do is basically, we can simply run this. And you see it doesn't work again. That is because, again, we are missing this little thing, collection view, and then um, delegate is cell. There you go. Let's run this. Now it should work. Now it should be all up and running. And yeah, you can see it's nicely sorted here, nicely ordered. And now if we say, for example, it's also view.frame.height here, and we go and say something sweet here as um, for the layout, we added the layout. We're going to say scroll direction then we can say it's actually horizontal and uh, here we go and you see you can now have something like snapchat well of course not as nice this is just for you to understand how collection views work but yeah, that's pretty nice. And that's basically it. You've just coded everything by hand without actually the storyboard. You just made a collection view and it works. So thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you liked it, well, give me a thumbs up. If not, well, tell me in the comments below why you didn't like it. And if you have more wishes for videos, just feel free to tell me in the comments below and don't forget to check out my GitHub, as I said at the start of the video. I always love to talk and see people contribute together. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, as I said, and goodbye.